Okay, we're going to continue on with FF7 and with Robin Bullock. If you guys remember when we left off, Robin Bullock and Roger Stone were talking. There was some confusion about what Roger or what Robin Bullock was talking about because Roger Stone came on and told everybody he thought that there was a demonic portal above the White House. And then Robin Bullock chimes in and says, oh, yeah, I asked God to open that portal, but demons are using it currently. Um, and everyone was totally confused by the whole thing because we thought that demons opened the portal. That's what Roger Stone came on to say. So anyway, that's where we left off. So let's continue without further ado. The leader of it's Apollyon or Apollo. And, uh, Robin, when you say they need a religious um, ritual, yeah, they, are they they're looking for a worship of Lucifer? Is that well, right? Well, this is what they know. They know this. See, science could open the dimension, but it couldn't get the spirit world involved. Yeah, I, I feel like the guy was, before, he was talking about how this portal was demonic, but it was actually God that opened it, and that kind of threw a wrench in everybody's claims, because the portal wasn't supposed to have been opened by God, it was supposed to have been opened by Satan, right? So now he's moved on to something entirely new. He started talking about CERN, and how CERN opened a secret portal into the human realm it, or the demon realm. It was crazy. Let me just step back a little bit, see if we can listen to that part again. But uh, this is not some mm -hmm. practical joke. This isn't some conspiracy theory. Uh, I'm absolutely convinced. It is actually a conspiracy theory. In fact, that's exactly what it is. Convinced that this is a, it's, de it's demonic. It mm. is a satanic portal. Uh, it, it is access to this earth uh, by those who are evil, and only by closing it will be we will we be successful in saving uh, this nation under God. So good. Okay, so if just a few minutes before this, Robin Bullock claimed that the portal was opened by God when he prayed for it. Robin Bullock said he prayed for the portal to be opened. And I guess now Roger Stone is trying to step back and reverse that and say, this was a satanic portal and it needs to be closed. Okay, can, can I say something right here? I mean, yeah. uh, uh, because I want, you to, uh, I want you to think about this just a minute. Okay. Uh, I don't think Roger Stone's very happy about this. This is really interesting. Uh, we're at 58.28. Listen or watch uh, Roger Stone's face here. Watch his face. Okay. Can, can I say something right here? I mean, yeah, uh, uh, because hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is important. Okay. Can, can I say something right here? I mean, yeah, uh, uh, because I want you to uh, I want you to think about this just a minute. OK, uh, since that portal formed. Okay, wasn't it Maryland that just passed such a, a, a hideous thing trying to pass that? To, uh, wasn't it Maryland? I'm not sure. That, I, I'm not that sure tried, that. About abortion? Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure which state one it was. Of these, yeah, and see, this, this thing, if all of this is not real, and people don't believe that this is real, okay, then you've got to ask yourself something. Now, now watch this. You're talking about portals. Okay, do we want to get heavy? Yeah, let's get heavy. Okay, if we're going to talk about portals, let's talk. Now, maybe Roger Stone just always looks pissed off, no matter what's happening, no matter what's going on or who he's talking to or whatever. About this, let's talk about a big one. Let's talk about one that was they, they gave their own prophecy. Uh, there's a big Hadron Collider in CERN, at CERN, Switzerland. Okay, that Hadron Collider, when they, did, when they dedicated their rail tunnel, how come they came on YouTube and did a big thing, a big presentation where they had heads of government sitting there? They had a flyby salute with the Air Force. I know we already listened to this part uh, for the chat that was here on Thursday, I think. Uh, I just wanted to have a little bit of background on it because I'm splitting this into different sections. And I want to have like the extra like spots here for context or whatever. So just bear with me through it. 
And so now get this. Uh, three days ago, CERN kicked up again. They've op- they started it really? spinning really? again after three years. And so now here, here you go. So when it's built on the temple of Apollo, outside the door is the god Shiva in a big statue. I'm not telling you anything you can't look up. The god Shiva, you know, the four-armed Hindu god. The Yeah, I, I've mentioned this before. CERN received a bunch of gifts when they opened their doors from different countries because it was a big scientific thing. You know, it was a scientific achievement. Um. So CERN received a bunch of gifts from all kinds of different countries. One of the countries was India, I believe. And India gave them a, just a Shiva statue. And of course, religious zealots like Robin Bullock are reading conspiracies into that. Like, uh, Shiva is the god of destruction. They're trying to destroy us and... Actually, they're going to create a black hole and blah, blah, blah. It's just ridiculous, man. So Apollo equals Satan. Last time I checked, hell was a copy of the realm of Hades. And Satan rules hell just like Hades ruled the realm of Hades. Lol. Oh, it gets crazier than that. You think that's crazy? Oh, just wait. Just wait. I got something for you here. Give me a second to find it. Hang on. Here it is. Here it is. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Watch this clip from Watch this clip from Robin Bullock. Uh, this is him talking about a satanic throne again. They built this throne. By the way, this is uh, yeah, June 30th, 2021 when this came out. All right, listen to this. They built this throne and it was replica after the throne of Satan in Berlin, <laughs> the Pergamon right. throne. See, there it is. See it? Really? See it, the columns, see all yeah. of that? Oh, look, man. look at the stars and stripes hanging there and Satan's throne is above the stars. Look at it. So yeah. there he sits there. Now watch this. There's this. There's the real throne of Pergamon. Tell me they don't look alike. What is so similar about these two things? Really? I mean, look, they both have windows. They both have stairs. But just about every stage in existence has windows and stairs. What is so crazy similar about these two things? Robin Bullock needs there to be a conspiracy theory. That is his whole bit, is being a conspiracy theorist. That's what he's all about. That's what he's always been about. There is no real similarity between these two thrones, quote unquote, or this stage in this throne. It's absolutely bizarre that this dude is obsessed with this. So once again... I mean, he's talking to Roger Stone. He's bringing up this throne of Apollo stuff. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. It was nonsense here. It was nonsense with Roger Stone. It's always been nonsense. There he sits there. Now watch this. There's this. There's the real throne of Pergamon. Tell me they don't look alike. Uh, They really don't look alike. One is a, a communal area where people can walk up, and the other is also an area where people can walk up. They both have stairs. They both have windows. I'm not sure what you're trying to get at here, man. And yeah. then if you superimpose one over the other, there it is. Oh, my God, dude. Take a look at this one. If you superimpose one over the other, there it is. Altar of Zeus. I'm not seeing what he's trying to get at. What is he trying to get at? It's like he thinks he's, you know, caught us in some secret thing or whatever. Okay, you just put two pictures on top of each other. I don't understand. What are you trying to imply here? Come on. So Barack Obama, oh man, when he walked out on that stage and said, a righteous wind is at our back. And he starts talking about, and the crowds go wild. He's standing on a replica of the throne of Satan or the altar of Baal or the throne of Zeus. Yeah, okay, that's the end. I thought he was going to say something else, but he just didn't. Uh, So that's Robin Bullock. This is the kind of thing he's been doing since the very beginning. 
the dude is ridiculous. He's always been ridiculous, and he's always going to be ridiculous. He's going to continue being ridiculous until the day he dies, probably. Uh, so, it, you know, all this stuff that he's saying with Roger Stone, it really does not surprise me at all. God of destruction. That's the same one that sits at the head of the table of the WHO, the God of destruction, Shiva. They've got it. At, they had it at their table it's when literally China. There, you can see it online. There's it, it's on the it. wall. It sits there. Okay. Then Obama in 2010 appeared as Shiva. Yeah. On the front of Newsweek, and they gave him four arms, and they called him the God of all things. Now we see them passing laws to baby 28 days after it's born. No, I talked about this last episode. Uh, there is nobody fighting for this. Nobody suggested this in Congress. There was a single article where somebody, some random person was pushing for Asian youths, you know, up to 28 days. I don't know of anybody who actually supports that. And it, the article is from 2013. It's like 10 years old. Nobody supports that. This is just... Complete BS. Now, only after that portal opened did they do that. Only when that formed in D.C. did that happen. So this thing is, they're pushing this to the end of this year because 2022 is their prophesied year. Yep. And if it's not so, somebody answer all these questions. Yeah. No, no, I and think that I think that I, I feel I'm comfortable saying I've answered all of these questions. Like everything that you've said is a conspiracy theory and it's complete nonsense. There is nothing to it. It's truly bizarre that he believes these enough to to think that they're worth repeating. Like there there is nothing reasonable or rational uh, or rational about anything this dude just said. That's absolutely right, and, and I have I've had a very clear uh, instinct uh, that that you're about to have this fall yet another pandemic. In other words, they need an excuse for which all voting can be by mail in. Uh, so I God, this dude is really still leaning into the whole mail in voting is fraud narrative or whatever. This is so ridiculous and sad. Come on. I, I see the very strong possibility of another fabricated pandemic uh, using the tactic of fear. Pandemic is not fabricated. I will not stand for people lying like that without being corrected. They know there's a red tide waiting that coming. They, they can see that between gasoline prices and food shortages and inflation. And whose fault are all of those things? Their inflation, gas prices, and food prices are all up worldwide. It's not Biden's fault. This would be happening whether Biden was president or not. That's how this works. Another boss is massive pain in the ass for me. Well, here's a little secret for this boss. You don't have to do anything. Stay alive. He flies away. You don't even have to hit him. Just stay alive. So I just used regen and barrier, or regen and wall, basically. I'm just going to sit here and wait. He's going to use Ultima Beam on me. Just going to sit and wait. Not even going to hit him. Boom. There he goes. Anyway, let's keep listening. Uh, and the fact that, that our foreign policy in shambles, uh, that... that, that that uh, 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 Iraq is raining missiles on Israel. We have a war in Ukraine. We have the, the Chinese harassing American flagged ships in the South China Sea. Uh, we have everything the guy says is propagandistic in some way. Do not believe him without evidence ever. Anything that he says, look it up. We have, we have an attempt here at home to erase our culture. To, re, to relace, relace our, our, our right to worship, uh, mm. to erase our history. Mm. Uh, Nobody wants to erase your right to worship or your history or whatever. Feel free. Go nuts. Record whatever you want. I don't care. Uh, I, don't, I have no interest in erasing your right to worship. If you're a Christian, great. 
Go nuts. Don't push your religion on me. That is what I want. Don't push your religion on me. Don't force your beliefs on me. That is what they've been trying to do this entire time. And they are calling it persecution when they're not allowed to force other people to believe and worship the way that they do. That's Christian persecution. Totally. Confuse people about gender when the Bible is very clear on this mm -hmm. question. Uh, uh, if I've said this once, I've said it a thousand times, the Bible is not a scientific source and should not be read as, as one. The Bible, at best, is a religious source. It's just a, it's just a, a, a book full of allegories and nothing more. If you want to derive morals or religious values from it or whatever, be my guest. It doesn't answer scientific questions. And this is, a, this is the manifestation uh, of many years planning. In other yes. words, this, this did not yes. just happen. That's right. Uh, and it, it, was, it was, I think... It I mean, I assume they're still talking about the portal, right? The portal was the manifestation of years of planning or whatever. Okay. It was certainly a, a, uh, a, a Kim Clement prophecy who foresaw the election of Donald Trump as the right... Yeah, I don't know if you guys have seen this or not, but Kim Clement is this supposed pastor. I'm sorry, this supposed prophet who claims that he prophesied Donald Trump becoming president. Um, it wasn't a prophecy. He just said back in like 2007 that he thought that Trump was going to run for president. That's basically it. And lo and behold, Trump ran for president like 10 years later. That's not surprising. That's not a prophecy. Like, I, I don't understand how people actually buy this. Right man, the Lord put in the right place at the yes. right time. Not a politician. Never want, I can just tell you, I've known him 42 years. He's been, I was at his wedding. Uh, he was at my wedding when wow. I married my wife. Uh, I know, I knew his parents very well. They were great people. Fred and Mary. Uh, I knew his brother, Robert, who's passed. I worked with him very closely. Uh, he he never had a burning need to be president. This has nothing to do with his ambition. No, he didn't have a burning need to be president, but he has always had a burning need to be powerful, to do anything it took to be powerful. And guess what gives you power? Being president. Hmm. He didn't need a big fancy house. He had the nicest house you could imagine. His, his mansion in Mar-a-Lago is, uh, is, is an extraordinary home. He didn't need a giant fancy airplane. He already had a, his own 747. <laughs> he didn't need to be well-known or he didn't need the acclaim. Everybody knew who Donald Trump was. Well, I mean, they'd heard the name, but now everybody in the world knows the name because he was one of the biggest presidents alive uh, in history, in my opinion. So anyway... He is more powerful, objectively, more powerful now and more well-known now than he was then, th than he was before being president. I mean, you have to understand, serving the American people has cut his net worth in half. Yes. No, it hasn't. Not in any way. What are you even talking about? You've got to be joking. It has only increased his net worth. How would you come to the conclusion that it cut his net worth in half to be president. That is absurd. And on top of that, he and his family have had to suffer the vituperation and slings and arrows of a political establishment that he terrifies. They're terrified of him. That's why. Yeah, that's because he's a, he's a monster. He's willing to overthrow the government to remain in power. That's why we're terrified. We don't want somebody who's willing to destroy democracy in power. Obviously, we're terrified. Why today they want to eliminate the possibility uh, of, a, uh, of another Trump candidacy. Hmm. Uh, because you, uh, putting a godly man in the White House again. Uh, I don't believe Trump has ever been godly, and I don't believe he's godly now. I honestly think the guy's an atheist. I really do. Joe Biden claims to be a Catholic, yet he's crazy about abortion. I'm sorry, that just doesn't, it doesn't work that way. 
Joe Biden is not crazy about abortion. He has specifically said that he is pro-life, but he understands that he doesn't have the right to force his morality on others. That's what Joe Biden has said. He's not crazy about abortion. What, what does that even mean? That just does, you can't be a good Catholic. You can't That's be right. a good Christian uh, and be for the murder of the unborn. That's right. So uh, this is... Yeah, Joe Biden isn't for abortion. This is Again. all... Uh, I'm sorry. He's not for abortion. Again, this is a complete misrepresentation of his position. It's going to come to pass. Now, I believe... It's just my personal belief that he's going to be president 45 and president 47. It, it has been done before. It was a New Yorker who did it. Grover Cleveland, the last conservative Democrat uh, who was elected, and then defeated, and then came back to victory. Uh, what? Grover Cleveland? I don't remember that. Do you guys remember that? 1837 to 1908. Oh, that's when he was alive. Uh, he was the 22nd and 24th president. Interesting. I did not know that about him. I had no idea that there was a gap between. Huh. How about that? That's really interesting. Well, you know what Grover Cleveland didn't do? He didn't, he didn't uh, inspire an insurrection on the U.S. Capitol. So there's that, you know, just kind of. Pointing that one out for you. Uh, turns out Grover Cleveland really did run for president, win, and then run again and lose, or just skip a term, I guess, and then won again after the next guy. I had no idea. He's going to be president 45 and president 47. It, it has been done before. It was a New Yorker who did it. Grover Cleveland, the last conservative Democrat uh, who was elected, then defeated, and then came back to victory. Uh, I think that that is, I think that is what's going to happen. I know that he's praying about it. He's told me he's praying about it. I That's interesting because Trump has not actually come out and announced that he's going to be running for president again yet. In fact, he's kind of hinted at the idea that maybe he won't for health reasons. I mean, who knows? He probably will. Um, his old fixer, Michael Cohen, believes that he will not run again because he doesn't want to risk basically losing a fatal blow to the guy's ego when you have narcissism clinical narcissism like donald trump is purported to have losing an election like that is a big deal um you you know it's not something that you just put yourself in danger of doing like losing an election you don't want to risk it so i don't know time will tell if he does end up deciding to run I, i'm not sure if he will or not I asked him, are you going to run again? This was a week ago. And he said, well, I'm, pr I'm thinking about it. I'm praying about it. I'd like to, but uh, it's too early to say. I think he's inclined to do it. A and that strikes fear uh, in the, those who are advocating the new world order. That no one's advocating a new world order. It's just a conspiracy theory, nothing more. Uh, I do have to say, though, it strikes fear in me. I don't want a president who's willing to destroy democracy to win. I don't want that. It's truly disturbing stuff. That strikes absolutely mm -hmm. fear in, 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 in Klaus Schwab uh, and George Soros. Oh, my God. All these Jewish conspiracies. Come on. Get over yourselves, guys. Uh, and those who just like to erase Christ. They like to erase the Bible. They like to erase our ability to worship as nobody wants to erase your ability to worship we just want to be left alone and you want to force it on us that's the only difference here as we please so uh, this is an epic moment in time uh, it's not just another election i mean I, I look i've been in the business a long time and we always say well this election is different than every other election but that hasn't been true in the past these next elections are, are, are not just partisan political uh, uh, contests uh, of no consequence. Mm. This is an epic struggle uh, uh, between, as I said earlier, dark and light. And I'm going to be vilified for this. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to get the daylights kicked out of me. <laughs> uh, but, but I don't really care because yeah. I, I, I prayed about it uh, between Robin's advice, between the advice of my own pastor. I know I'm doing his will. I'm absolutely That's positive good. about it. 
uh, and let the slings and arrows come. Roger, so, I was going to ask you for for my sake and other people. How long ago was this event with uh, Franklin Graham, where you received the Lord like and repented? It was about four months before my trial. My trial was in January uh, of twenty of uh, twenty twenty. So, like twenty nineteen, then. Uh, there, I guess they're trying to pin down when this guy had a come to Jesus moment. I truly do not believe that he's a that he is a religious person in his heart at all. I just don't. I think he's just taking advantage of gullible suckers and nothing more, in my opinion. I swear these Trumpers are are anti-Semitic. Uh, they are. They absolutely are anti-Semitic. Yes, and it's wrong and grotesque. But they use hate at every opportunity to further their goals. That's what they've always done. Simple as that. So a couple of years, two years. It May is, I just say... It's you, it's having, you, I had to have the odyssey of making a decision uh, to leave the Catholic Church. I mean, that was a very tough decision. Yeah. The Catholic Church was the church of my parents and sure. my grandparents, and I had all my sacraments there. But uh, the, the But you, you know, the Catholic Church couldn't get me further with evangelicals and the evangelicals are the ones that i needed to manipulate so i had to leave the catholic church behind the corruption uh, of the catholic church mm. uh, the, not only the hiding of mm. but we we have a that's fair enough but uh, you know evangelicals are pretty corrupt themselves just want to put that on record we have a pope who doesn't believe uh, in private property rights i looked i what is he talking about this is more anti Anti anybody he disagrees with propaganda, anybody he hates he comes up with, or anybody he needs to use, he comes up with some explanation, some idea, something to claim about them. Private property rights are enshrined in the Bible in nine different yeah, places. Yeah. The, the Lord likes free enterprise. The like the Lord has nothing against hard work, uh, yeah. but but so this pope is illegitimate in my opinion. In fact. Well, Wow, anybody you don't like is illegitimate. Love it. Absolutely love it. I don't even think he's the real pope. Yeah. There was a time when the Catholic Church was a bulk work of anti-communism. Mm -hmm. Those days are over. Now when I... Hold on, let me step back like just 10 seconds because I want to hear that again. 109. Well, in nine different yeah, places. Yeah. The, the Lord likes free enterprise. The, like, the Lord has nothing against hard work. Uh, yeah. But but So this pope... Is illegitimate, in my opinion. In fact, well, I don't even think he's the real pope. Yeah, there was a time when. What does that mean? I don't even think he's the real pope. And for the record, Jesus was kind of socialist a little bit, right? He was kind of a little bit socialist. And the Catholic Church was a bulk work of anti-communism. Mm -hmm. Those days are over. Well, you know, like I said, Jesus was like giga socialist, right? Jesus was like all in favor of people getting rid of their money and putting it all down and following them and giving it all to the poor and so on and so forth. What part of the Bible gave you the impression that God is a capitalist? Because I missed that part. Hashem slash Yahweh says nothing about capitalism or socialism. If anything, their boy Jesus was very socialistic, right? Now, when I leave church, when I go to Coral Ridge Presbyterian, I leave inspired. Mm -hmm. I leave happy. I, I leave ready to get back in the battle Monday morning. Uh, so, you know, they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a, a, a different result. Uh, that's kind of the colloquial jokey definition. Sure. Yeah. Go on. There's no reason why you should leave church on Sunday depressed. There's no reason why you should leave. Well, your, your advancement in all things kingdom, all things of the Lord, <laughs> amazes me. In two years, do you you probably aren't even in touch with how far advanced you are in things in the spiritual maturity. Right, dude, this guy really seems like he's trying to make himself out to be a prophet now, like. Like, a lot of these people claim to be prophets, Robin Bullock and stuff. I think that he wants to be included in their ranks. Um, Roger Stone does. I mean, it just stands out to me, and I just compliment you. You know, I'm, I'm about to hit 67, so we're close in age. But, 
man, it's taken me all these years to get to where I am. And you've just skyrocketed there. And you, and yep. then the Lord has used you to marry because the, the wisdom of the political, because you, He's not letting you, or you're, and you realize that you're not leaving the political scene at all. So anyway, uh, Robin, what were you going to say? You're like, he's fawning over him. This is hard to listen to, honestly. Uh, Robin, what were you going to say? Well, I was just, I was going to say a couple things about this. Number one is that, is that uh, remember, when the Red Sea does close, and it will come back together. Now, remember that. It's going to come back at some point. Now, for those of you who didn't watch part one or two, I believe Robin Bullock earlier said something about, he said something about the reflecting pool was supposed to be the Red Sea, and he parted it. Some preacher at the reflecting pool on January 6th gave him a staff, and then he slammed the staff down and parted the reflecting pool basically is what he said. Really what he said is he slammed it down and parted the reflecting pool. But what happened was the reflecting pool dried up and then this portal appeared above the White House. So Robin Bullock believes that he's the one that commanded the portal to be opened by God or something. Um, that was in like, I think that was in part two. Yeah, it was. It was in part two. So if you haven't seen that, then give it a look. No, I'm sorry. This is part four. That was in part three. So check out part three if you want to see more, I think. No, maybe it was part two. Anyway, just watch all of them. You know what? Just watch all of them. I'm not sure which part it was in. When it does, it was a violent, it was a violent thing. This thing is not going to be pretty when it comes back together. Remember, to, to watch the Red Sea crash down on Pharaoh was not, uh, can I tell you why Pharaoh, can you, can you think about one reason why Pharaoh would have went into the Red Sea? I mean, you got to think about that. The Red Sea parts, Moses goes across and here comes Pharaoh down after him. Well, I love it. This guy's using logic to deduce that this story is nonsense. This, this is not how it ever would have played out. This never would have happened. It's impossible to have happened anyways. He's come to the correct conclusions. But what's his actual conclusion? Pharaoh was an idiot. Not Robin Bullock's an idiot. Pharaoh is the idiot. Genius. What kind of idiot does it take <laughs> to go down in the Red Sea after the man? Unless Pharaoh thought it parted for him. Oh. He thought it parted for him. What? Pharaoh thought the Red Sea parted for him? Are you serious? He believed he was a god. The Democrat Party, now I'm just going to say this, and you know, the Lord told me this. He said, you and I both know the Democrat Party's evil. Mm -hmm. That's what he told me. Now he said this to me. Wow. Who said this to him? I, did he say God told him this? The Democrat Party, now I'm just going to say this, and you know, the Lord told me this. He said, you and I both know the Democrat Party's evil. Mm -hmm. That's what he told me. Now, he said this to me. Wow. And the I missed it again, apparently. Did, I'm assuming he's saying God told him this. The Lord just has conversations with me, you know. And he said, you and I both know the Democrat Party is evil. He said, now watch this. He said, I'm not holding them responsible for this. He said, I'm holding the Republican Party responsible oh, wow. for this. Are you serious? Yes, sir. He oh, told man. me that. He Jeez. said. Why? I mean, if if. The Democrat Party, quote unquote, is the supposedly evil party of Satan. Why would God hold the Republican Party responsible? This is bizarre stuff, dude. Because they pretended to be the guardians of the people. They abandoned their president. They, they did all that they did, and they could stop it tomorrow if they wanted to. No, they couldn't. What are you talking about? The only chance that they that Republicans had to destroy democracy was Mike Pence. He had the chance to follow through with the plan that Trump told him to follow through with originally on January 6th, and he didn't. That was his only opportunity, and they missed it because Pence refused to destroy democracy. 
uh, truly honorable decision on Mike Pence's part, I just have to say, although Pence is a, you know, an evil guy in his own ways, very anti-LGBT, it's just awful in so many ways. That's not what, that's not what I'm talking about here. Uh, what I'm saying is they had their opportunity. They missed it. They missed the opportunity. Republicans did not have the opportunity and, and currently do not have the opportunity to destroy democracy at this immediate moment, though I, I think they would if they could. And this is and and this is and this is what he told me. He said now uh, he said, I'm holding them responsible for this. Now. When the, the Democrat Party. Now, remember, we're still dealing with this, these spirits, these in these realms. You can watch demon possessed people almost when they react on television. And so when this thing opened when the Republican Party abandoned their president and just split the way they did, the, the Democrat, Pharaoh, thought it open for him. He thinks they've held it open for them to go through on dry land and destroy, watch, God's people. to dest- This is so strange, dude. This guy really does believe all the stuff that he spreads. And the sad part is he's a televangelist. Others believe him, too. Others believe this. To destroy what all the values the nation's built on. They think they've left it open for them. The Democrat, Pharaoh, thought it open for him. He thinks they've held it open for them to go through on dry land and destroy, watch, God's people. To destroy a way of life of, of the Bible. To destroy what all the values the nation's built on. They think they've left it open for them. And they think that they're going through it, the arrogance of this thing. Mm. But there is coming a crashing down. And when it comes down, it's not going to be pretty. Now, I'll tell you something. You know, when, when, when that fraudulent uh, election took place, which was anybody with sawdust for brains knows that was fraudulent. Mm-hmm. No, it wasn't. I just want to put that on record. It was not. Um, If it was, if it was fraudulent, then please give us evidence. I want the evidence. The courts have rejected all the evidence that they've brought because it's piss poor. There is no evidence for this. They are completely and totally full of it. Nobody who can hold five rallies a day, draw 15 to 25,000 people each rally, can be beaten by a man who him, Barack Obama, Cher, and Bon Jovi can't draw 300 people to a parking lot. <laughs> I know. And s- yeah, okay. Joe Biden refusing to hold big events because COVID was going on is not the same as being completely incapable of drawing a crowd. Joe Biden was fully capable of bringing people to events. We had a, a worldwide pandemic happening at that moment. And we didn't want to risk people's lives. They're not the same thing. They're using this as a point of pride. Like, look at how many people Trump drew to his rallies during a worldwide pandemic. During a worldwide pandemic. Seriously. The guy doesn't give a shit about the people that come to listen to him speak or whatever. He doesn't care about them. He never has. Sit in a basement and beat a man like that. Oh, I love it. So he's going back to the old Joe Biden sat in a basement line of reasoning. No, actually, Joe Biden didn't sit in a basement. I find this so funny. You know who did sit in a basement when people were protesting against Trump? The Secret Service brought him to the bunker, which, you know, honestly, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. It was the right thing to bring Trump to the bunker. It really was. I don't know if you guys remember this, but forever ago, Joe Biden was brought to, uh, I'm sorry, Donald Trump was brought to the bunker, I think under the White House for his own protection um, because there were like protests and stuff like that. That's a reasonable thing to do. If the president's in danger, they should be brought to safety, period. But Donald Trump didn't like that. He didn't like the fact that people knew that about him. Because he wanted to act like some strong man. 
That is why I harp on it. And I find it fascinating that they talk about Joe Biden sitting in his basement, whatever that even means. They talk about that rather than pointing out the fact that Donald Trump hid in a bunker from protesters. I mean, horse sense tells you that's crazy. Okay, now... Horse sense? Horse sense tells you that's crazy? When, when all of this went on, the Lord told me, he said, the office of the president has been vacated. He said, uh, there's a jackal sitting in his seat. Oh, my God. Yeah, this is the old jackal claim. I'm sure you guys have probably seen this by now, but in case you haven't, let me show you Robin Bullock's song that he wrote about, quote unquote, the jackal, a.k.a. Joe Biden. He wrote this song about Joe Biden. Grab a jackal by the leg, shake him like a dog, throw him all across the ground. Grab a jackal by the leg, shake him like a dog, and throw him across the ground. Yeah, so that happened. And somebody sent me this. Or somebody sent this to me because they wanted to point out the hand movement that he made here. Mistreating animals is not cool, guys. Don't joke about it, don't sing about it, and don't make hand gestures that draw the, the attention of people like me, okay? Just letting you know, Robin Bullock, is a bad idea. Grab a jackal by the leg, shake him like a dog, and throw him across the ground. Yeah. Anyway. So, uh, let's just step back and listen to that little segment one more time that uh, Robin Bullock had to say. Oh. The Lord told me, he said, the office of the president has been vacated. He said, uh, there's a jackal sitting in his seat. So I don't believe you. I think you're full of it. So I started calling him a jackal. And I, the Lord said he was a jackal. Well, later I find out that Jesus, you know, I didn't think about it. Jesus called Herod a fox. Well, a fox in Hebrew means jackal, and it means an illegitimate. He was illegitimate. Herod wasn't even a Jew. Yeah, I, I don't think fox and jackal are the same thing in Hebrew. I don't know for sure, but I do know that Robin Bullock has just made stuff up about Hebrew before. Uh, here's another example of something that Robin Bullock just straight up made up. Yeah, this is, this is the clip I was looking for. Watch what Robin Bullock here says. This is another example of Robin Bullock claiming to know what Hebrew and Greek mean and having absolutely no clue. The book of Luke, I believe it is, when it says, I beheld, Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven. Remember that? You've read mm -hmm. that? Oh, yeah. Well, in Hebrew, it says something like this. If you read it in Hebrew, Wait, why would you read it in Hebrew? It was in Greek. Luke was New Testament. It was written in Greek, not Hebrew. Why would you even translate it to Hebrew? That makes no sense at all. It says something like this. I beheld uh, Satan uh, fall from the heights, or actually it says, I beheld Satan as Barak Obama. No, that's not what it says. Um, there is a grain of truth to this, and let me, let me tell you what the grain of truth is. Um, yeah, okay, Barak, B-A-R-A-K, Barak in Hebrew means lightning. Um, I believe Obama means blessing in Arabic. I could be wrong on that, but anyways, B-A-R-A-K in Hebrew means lightning. But why would you be translating the New Testament to Hebrew? It was in Greek, not Hebrew. It's nonsense. And it doesn't say Barack Obama anyways. It says B-A-R-A-K. It's just nonsense, the whole thing. What? It says it. No, it doesn't. It says I beheld him as Bar Barack uh, Obama or something. No. No, it doesn't. It does not say that at all. Not in any way, shape, or form. I beheld him as Bar Barak uh, Balma or something like that. Something in other words, it refers to that name. Bar no. 
Barack Obama. And he says, he didn't say he was Satan. He said, I beheld him as him. And so he walks out on the throne of Satan, declares everything he declares, signs into law, Baal worship, just like that. Did he believe that Obama signed Baal worship into law? What? In the book of Luke, I believe. That is bizarre stuff, dude. Truly bizarre stuff. Almost as bizarre as this. Cross the ground. Grab a jackal by the leg, shake him like a dog, and throw him across the ground. Almost. It's getting there. He was illegitimate. So Jesus called him a fox. Well, I call Biden a jackal. You can pray for Joe Biden. You probably should. You could pray for the office of the president. But you can't pray for President Joe Biden. You might as well pray for the Easter Bunny. He doesn't because exist. Because he don't exist. There's no such being. There's just a fraudulent tide. What does he mean by that? Like, I've heard him say that a few times. The charitable interpretation would be, he's saying that Joe Biden isn't the president. But I'll be damned if it doesn't sound just like he's saying Joe Biden is not a real person. And it truly, honestly, deeply would not surprise me at all to hear Robin Bullock say Joe Biden is a demon. I mean, he's said as much. He's said as much. So, yeah, I'm just not sure what he's trying to get at here. And if you let that go, then this will never be fixed. Okay, now, this is what he said to me. Now, I'm going to show you how the prophetic works. He said, He's a jackal. I said, he's a jackal. The Lord said, he's a jackal. I said, he's a jackal. I said it over and over and all this time. <laughs> and then all at once, it shows up on the news that a fox bit one of the congressmen, and they're all Democrats, they're biting. And it was a... <laughs> they're all Democrats that they're biting? Uh, there was a single news story of a single congressman being bit by a single fox that was wandering around or roving around the D.C. area. What do you mean they are all Democrats that they are biting? I'm not actually sure that it was a Democrat that was bit. Fox bites congressman. Let me, let me just look it up real fast. Fox at... Fox that attacked congressmen and others near Capitol had rabies, officials say. Wow, that's scary stuff, dude. Hope they got their rabies shots. Uh, a fox that bit a congressman, at least eight other people, and at least eight other people near the U.S. Capitol was euthanized and found to have rabies. That's a shame. Rabies is a scary illness, right, guys? Like, it basically is the zombie virus. It makes you, like, completely crazy and obsessed with biting, and biting is how it's spread. It's nuts, dude. The D.C. Public Health Lab has confirmed the fox that was captured yesterday tested positive for rabies. D.C. Health is contacting all human victims who were bitten by the fox. The health department said earlier in the day a female fox was responsible for nine confirmed bites on Capitol Hill. It was humanely euthanized, so rabies testing may be done. Test came back positive. So who, who got bit? The fox's kits were found and captured. Officials are working to determine next steps for them. DC Animal Control captured the fox Tuesday after receiving several reports of aggressive fox encounters. Among those who had the run-in with the fox was Representative Ami Barra, Democrat from California, who said he was nipped on the leg on, his way, on the way to the office on Monday. That's a good word, right? Nipped. Barra, a medical doctor, told NBC News on Tuesday they'd been start or that they that he'd started rabies prophylaxis treatment as a precaution. The treatment includes a round of seven shots and requires three rounds of follow-up shots for the next 14 days. Wow, rabies treatment is miserable. At least we have a treatment for it. You don't want to mess around with wild animal bites or anything like that, Barra said. Absolutely agreed. So it sounds like a single congressman was bit. <clears throat> a Democrat from California. 
there were other people, but there's no news as to whether or not they were Democrats. What, we don't know if they were Democrat or Republican, and it was only one congressman. So take that for what you will. I find it kind of weird that Robin Bullock claimed with no evidence that it was all Democrats that were being bit, and it was multiple of them, too. No evidence for that. Just say it, and it's suddenly true in his mind. And all at once, it shows up on the news that a fox bit one of the congressmen, and they're all... Oh, yeah, and uh, he was trying to draw a parallel between foxes and jackals. As far as I know, they're not the same thing. I'm really not sure why he would compare the two. I mean, is Biden a fox or a jackal? Which one is he? It's just ridiculous. All Democrats, they're Biden. No. And it was a jackal showed up in, on the, in the Capitol, on the Capitol grounds, bit uh, this congressman, and then they found a den of foxes, and they had to put them all down. Wow. I didn't read that. I don't know how true that is. I didn't read that they put the foxes down, the, the den of foxes. I thought that they were talking about what to do with them next. I didn't hear anything about putting them down. Oh, wow. And the Lord said he's a jackal, a fox. And then all these jackals show up in D.C. and start biting people. Then they all had rabies. They did. Well, I, I don't know that they all had rabies. I thought that the mother had rabies. I mean, I just read the article about it. I'm really not sure what he's talking about. Like, he's not conveying accurate information here. That's really the problem with Robin Bullock. You never know if what he's saying is true and accurate or not. And most of the time it's not. He just says whatever he wants right off the cuff. They all had rabies, uh. and so they had to take shots. And when Roger said a while ago something about spewing their poison, the Lord gave me a prophetic word on the 11th hour a few, uh, maybe a couple ago. Uh, the 11th hour, I believe, is his like show that he does with uh, Steve Schultz on the Elijah List uh, Facebook page and Rumble and stuff. And he said, now they're going to swallow their own poison. He said, now they'll begin to swallow their own poison. He also gave me a word that Fauci ran his tongue down the throat of a bat. What? Wow, that's weird and concerning and gross and disturbing, and I have no idea what you're even talking about. God, why? Why give me that visual image, man, honestly? And he's got two fang holes in his tongue, and he spewed that mess all over the world. And he said, now he'll drink his own poison. They're going to have to drink their own thing. And this is about to come down, Steve. The Red Sea will close again. It will come back together. And when it does, it's just like he was talking about a red wave. It will close again. This is so weird and creepy. Why are they like this? Please, somebody tell me. Somebody stop this. This is too much, dude. And when it does, it, it ain't going to be pretty. Because imagine what it would have looked like with Facebook. Well, on this red wave, when it happens, Robin, it's not what I'm hearing you say. It's not because of all these righteous Republicans that did, did and said the right thing. It's because the people have crossed the, and the people have been praying, and God's going to close it for the people, not because of those rhinos what? and other Republicans. This, water, this, is a very, this is a very key point. People should understand this. Uh, I'm a veteran of 40 years in Washington, D.C. You cannot think of this anymore in terms of Republicans and Democrats. That's not the division. It really isn't. There's one party and they're all in it. It's the Green Party. I don't mean the political Green Party, but it's fueled by money and power. Mm. Uh, it, it is. It, it, this is perhaps one of the one of I wouldn't say the mistakes, but the misjudgments by Donald Trump. He came to Washington thinking that there were two teams. The Republicans mm. are with me. The Democrats are over here. Ronald Reagan, who I worked for in three presidential campaigns, one of the greatest presidents in my lifetime. Wait. Oh, Ronald Reagan. Okay. I thought, wait, did Ronald Reagan run for president three times? I didn't know that. Uh, he was an outsider. 
but the party had coalesced around him. He called the agenda. We had some of the party's greatest victories. Uh, America came back stronger and better, teetering on the edge under his predecessor. Uh, Trump actually believed that all the Republicans were with him. What he didn't know is better a snake in the grass, knowing the Democrats, than an asp in the bosom. Our part of our, our what does that saying even mean? How bizarre! Problem today is not the the feckless, gutless, weak need, white wine swilling, country club belonging establishment Republicans. Uh, 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 pardon me. Our problem is that is the those, those established Republicans. It's not the socialist Democrats. That's right. It's the gutless Republicans. Uh, yeah. It's the Judases in our own camp. The Jud like I don't want to name names. Lindsey Graham. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Right now, there's this massive split in the Republican Party between Trumpists and non-Trumpists, and he's calling out the non-Trumpists. But honestly, Lindsey Graham has stood behind Trump this entire time, so I truly don't don't even know what he's talking about. Yeah. I'm not gonna yeah. Point fingers. I knew you were going to say Trump. that name first, you know, because he is a snake because he he's so believable when he's on camera. I, you know, anyway. I said this today, today on the 11th hour, I said, there is no way that the power moves that are being made that could be made without everybody being on the real same page. They're on the same team or there's no way they could make these moves they're making. There's no way it could happen. You know, I was down at a, a rally in Orlando one day. And it wasn't long back, I forget the name of it. Y'all would remember it, both of you. And they invited me to come, and I didn't speak or anything. I listened. Mike Pence was there. Different ones were there. All the Lindsey Graham was there. All of them came out and spoke. And I'm sitting there listening to them, and I didn't realize how I said it. I'm just sitting there at a table trying to be nice. <laughs> Steve, I had a suit on. I had a suit. <laughs> Okay, is he making a big deal out of this? Like, oh my God, I wouldn't wear a suit if I didn't really care. I wear suits sometimes. I wear suits every time I go to like a conference, usually, not the last one, but a lot of the time I wear suits at conferences. Why is that such a big deal? And I'm talking like not an expensive suit. I mean, just like a $100 suit from JCPenney or something. Robin Bullock had a suit on. I had okay. a suit on, I man. I mean, I was, I was going to be good. <laughs> And I was just sitting there, and they kept coming out. And this is what they would say, Roger. They would say, we got to fight. We got to fight. We got to fight. And then I, I said, well, how do, how do we fight? How, okay, how do you say we're going to fight? We got to vote. We got to vote. We got to vote. I said, we did that. We, yeah. we already did that. And then finally, they just kept on and on. And I said it out. And Robin said, I said it in a preacher voice, you know. I said it loud where you could hear it. <laughs> I said, why don't somebody address the elephant in the room? And I didn't realize it was full of elephants. I mean, the whole room, it was all Republicans. <laughs> or, or, and I said, well, so he's talking about how he made a fool of himself, uh, basically. Like, th this guy is a QAnoner. And I assume that's what he's talking about, a lot of his QAnon ideas. And then he came out with his QAnon ideas and, and discovered that like a lot of the people in the room were just, they weren't QAnoners. They were just, you know, right wing Republicans, which are in short supply these days, but still. Gentlemen, yeah, I, so I, I apologize. I have to move on to another show. Uh, so I thank you, my brothers, for having me. Uh, I thank you for your inspiration. Uh, I knew this was the right place to talk about the portal. That's perfect. Yeah. Uh, I call on anybody who, 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 who's seen this. Check it out for yourself, but pray. We need your prayers. We have to close the portal. It can be closed if millions of Americans will realize what we're saying. Robin is absolutely right. He's pretty savvy for a guy who's not a politician. Uh, and God bless you for having me here today. I now go to the Stone Zone at frankspeech.com, show I'm doing every day at 5 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Central. I love being on Elijah's Dreams, and I... I want to thank you both. Thank you so much, Roger. Keep God getting, bless you. Keep getting in the head, man. Just fly yeah. in their head. Stay in their yeah. thoughts. It don't yeah. matter what they say. You're in their thinking. The God stone sank you. like a pebble in yes, a brook. Yes. God, God bless you. you. So we'll in see their you brain. Again.
we'll see you then, Roger. I'll let you go. And then, uh, Robin, I'm going to have you finish that one thing. But go ahead, uh, Roger. I know you need to get to go to that show. So, you- Wow, that was weird. Everything about that was just just plain weird. Um, I, I'm not even sure how, what to say about that. I'm going to have to think about that for a while. Jesus Christ, that was strange. Wow. Robin Bullock was right in the middle of saying something even stranger. So I guess let's continue with him. You were saying, you, did you what you said in a preacher's voice? Did you finish that? No, I was well. I just said out loud, Steve. I said, I said, why don't somebody address the elephant in the room? Okay, well, that's what you said. Yeah, okay. I didn't realize that. I, I didn't think about the Republicans are elephants, and I said, yeah. You know, I said, why don't somebody address the elephant in the room? I said, we did vote. We did do that. It's Oh, okay. It's so, already- so wait a minute. Am I picking this up correctly? What he did was there was a talk, and the, at the talk they were saying you need to get out there and vote, and he stood up in, in the middle of this talk and interrupted it in his preacher's voice and said, am I going to talk about the elephant in the room or whatever? He done 80 million of us did it. Yeah. And- 80 million of us. No. That's inaccurate. Trump did not get 80 million votes, period. I know you want that to be the case. That's just not what happened. And we did it right, and you let them steal it, in other yeah. words. That's what I was saying. Yeah. And yeah. so they don't fool me, man. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I listen to one voice, and I hear God, and, it, and when he tells me something and I say it, it's amazing how it turns out the political realm is doing that exactly. That's and amazing. so... You know, That's I'm not amazing. a politician, but I, but well, I'm going to take... What'll be interesting is this dry land on the reflecting pool. It'll be interesting if they fill that in, and when they fill that in, I'm curious if it'll go, if they'll suddenly fill it in, which is like the closing of the sea. I don't know. I'm just kind of curious if there'll be a natural phenomenon. Well, I never thing. thought about this either. I, I never thought about it until you said it. See, I was thinking about how where I held the rod, it dried mm-hmm. up. Yeah. Well, that's true, but there had to be an Elijah uh, Red Sea time and an Elijah mm-hmm. moment. You know, if the guy had been holding a rod and slammed the rod on the ground right in front of the reflecting pool and the water instantly evaporated, not drained out or anything else that could be explained by natural phenomena, I mean instantly evaporated it would be enough to prove to me that god is real and that robin bullock seems to be right about a lot of it that's not what happened the guy's claiming that they drained the reflecting pool i don't know if that's true or not you carry a rod near the reflecting pool and then it gets drained and suddenly you claim that you're the one that drained it it's ridiculous dude come on and the elijah moment if you remember i was on your program there you were i said this is the elijah moment and now we're talking about it. Yeah. It would prove to me that something strange is happening, not necessarily God. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, but there are miracles that could take place that would prove to me that, that a God is real. If the water evaporated instantly and I could see it turn to steam and it was cold and it was immediately after he slammed his rod on the ground and commanded it to evaporate and I... I heard some message in my mind saying, God, I'm God and I've just evaporated the water or something like that. That would convince me. It never happens that way. You ever notice that? It never happens that way. They are always talking about uh, how all these miracles took place, blah, blah, blah. They're not miracles. They're never miracles like that. Um, The fire, everything on the Elijah stream. Yeah. And then you said... I had forgot about that. Well, yeah, that, and one of the things that he came know, down and licked up the water. Yeah, it licked up, lapped up, whichever. Yeah, I think licked up is the right term. It licked up the flames. It licked up the water. There was dry, and so now the water's gone. So it'll be interesting when they choose to refill that. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no proof that that'll happen in the natural in a specific timing, but it wouldn't surprise me at all. No, but there's no way that could be a coincidence. Yeah, these people are so ridiculous. There's no proof that it happens this way. It, there's no proof it happened supernaturally. Yeah, but there's no way that it didn't happen super, supernaturally. Uh, that's not proof. I need proof. What are you talking about, man? I was going to say, wouldn't it be fascinating if there was a sudden storm in Washington, D.C. and that filled 
<laughs> I don't yeah. know, man. I don't, I don't know. know. I know this. It's coming now. Yeah. The closing of the sea. Yeah. We have been ahead of it. We were in the spirit the whole time. Yeah. The command was made to open. It opened and dried. The Elijah moment was called, and the portal of fire formed over the White House. And when it did, the the pool dried up. Yeah. Everything. They have lost, Steve. They've lost. Mm -hmm. They've lost. These people are caricatures of themselves at this point. If we've lost, then prove it. If we have lost this supposed eternal struggle or whatever, then we should see results from that, right? I mean, I think in this episode, in one of the previous parts that I put out, he said that by the end of the year, some crazy big thing is going to happen. That's what he said. He made this prediction. They made this for 2021 and 2020 also. So I honestly don't know when they're going to stop sticking their, their feet in their mouth like this, but it's getting embarrassing at this point. Seriously. Lost and they know they've lost. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if you don't hear of a very famous politician moving to another country soon. I'm just oh. going to leave it at that. And, uh, um, do, we'll do, and can I just ask you like this, do you mean escaping to another country? Well, they won't be called escaping probably. Okay. <laughs> but, it, but, you know, this thing is about to, to change. This thing. Well, you know, you've said that for the past two or three previous years, I'm waiting for evidence. I'm still, still waiting for evidence. It sounds like this thing's about to get real. Really oh, it's, real. It, I said those words this morning. Said, <laughs> and you said those last year, too, and the year before that. There's nothing new about what he's saying right now. And it's honestly embarrassing that he continues to say it. If it's you real. did, yeah, it's, it's real, <laughs> it just popped it? into my head. I <laughs> yeah. don't normally use that expression. Yeah. And I thought this thing's about to get real. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're here now. We're on the other side of this thing. I said this two years, and I'll say this before we close anyway. Uh, it was an honor to be on with you, my brother. Well, you know, it, it always to is to me. Yeah, well, same yeah. here, too. I'm so glad it was a neat, uh, the three of us together was a very good yeah. to process all that. But, or, yeah. But, yeah, uh, I, um, uh, what was I just saying to you? I don't I mean, know. I, you were gonna, I don't know. You had a thought. <laughs> You're like me. You know, it's just like. Whoosh, well, I'm thinking of so much, you know. Yeah, yeah. So. But. But I think all of this is, we're about to see all of this end now. Yeah. And what's about to happen, what I was going to say is, is two, two years before this, this uh, uh, fraudulent um, inflated sickness happened, I'll put it. Fraudulent inflated sickness. No, it was real. It was real. And you didn't catch it. I'm assuming he didn't catch it. But if you didn't catch it, it is only by the grace of other people who decided to get vaccinated because you wouldn't. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, can, I can say, yeah, we're on Rumble, so you say whatever you want. We're on Rumble. Oh, yeah. You know me. I'm used to talking in code. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so anyway, before this, uh, this pandemic took place. Oh my God, he said the word. He said it. Plandemic. I love it, dude. This is so hilarious and sad. This is so ridiculous. And now you can see it where they call Pan out. I, I kept thinking, I wondered, who is that creature? It's Pan. That's who it was. That's it was. What, I don't know what he's talking about. Pan, is this one of his deities that he claims are out to get everybody or something? Actual, that's yeah. there's an actual big god or something named Pan or something like. There oh is, yeah, you're breaking up there, Steve. Pull it together, man. God named Pan. I don't. I don't know my mythology, but yeah, he's he he is, and uh, of course it'd take a few minutes to tell it. But when you wake him up, this is where you get the word pandemic from. This is oh. where you. No, it's not. Pan is a prefix meaning all. So pandemic means all encompassing illness, basically. It just like epidemic is like a more localized illness. Pandemic means everywhere.
pansexual means you like everybody. The supposed god Pan is not where pandemic comes from. Pan is the god of nature, so technically he is correct. What does nature have to do with all-encompassing illness? I I'm not seeing the connection here. Oh, oh, it is. Pan okay. means... Yeah, they're mixing up the god and the prefix. They're two different things. Yeah, it's, he, he is, and uh, of course it'd take a few minutes to tell it, but when you wake him up, this is where you get the word pandemic from. This is where oh, you get... Oh, it is. Pan okay. means... Yeah, it's where you get the word panic from the god... No. Pan, the false god Pan, and demic is demographics, you know, and... So what is he talking about? He's just pulling this right out of his ass. None of this makes sense. None of this is real. So they, they brought forth this thing to put forth a pandemic. They're consulting gods every time they do this. They're consulting demons, in other words. Not real gods, but demons. Yeah. Yeah. And, but, yeah. but I said this two years before. I said, I'd get up in the pulpit, Steve, and I'd say, Everything you know is about to change. Everything you know is about to change, and it'll never go back to the way it was. And I wouldn't know what I was talking about. And then April 30th, 2019, you know, you, you saw it on video where the Lord told me on live video. He said, and I said it, there's a sickness coming, an epidemic. Mm, yeah. Oh, is he claiming to be to have prophesied the supposed pandemic, as he calls it? I thought there wasn't a pandemic. Isn't that what he was just saying? But now he's saying he prophesied that there was one. And uh, all this. Well, I'm telling you again, everything you know is about to change. You're about to wow. see a change like you that we haven't seen before. There has to be a monumental thing happen. You cannot let the election of 2020 go. It can't no. be let go. No. It no. cannot be let go. And uh, we ought to be ashamed of ourselves for, for thinking about it. Yeah, for even trying to do that. Uh, I'm just looking to someone wrote me a note about confirmed via live cam. The reflecting pool is now refilled. I guess looks like they... Like, honestly, was the reflecting pool ever empty? I seriously, deeply doubt it. I, I have my doubts here. I don't know. Maybe they did empty it and, you know, and then they refilled it. I'm not sure what they're talking about here. I can't see it. Looks like they started filling it about three days ago. <laughs> three days ago. Oh, man. <laughs> what did you say happened three days ago? Didn't you say something happened three days ago? I did. I, I'm what? trying to. Remember what I said a minute ago. Something started three days ago. Yeah, about three days ago or something. But anyway, we see it coming. And uh, 2020 can't be let go. And right now, I think there's more on President Trump's mind than he's telling. I think so. And, and right now, all he has to do is turn and move toward his seat. And uh, he'll, he'll end up sitting in it. Yeah, yeah. And I he don't certainly think, will. I mean, I, th I like th I like what Roger said. Um, we don't have but months. Isn't or that things so? are going to, yeah, yeah, or things are going to be, you know, almost irreversible. So, okay, hey, this is a very specific prediction. We have months before some irreversible thing happens, right? This sounds like a very specific prediction. Mark it down. We're in May. By the end of 2022, if some very specific thing doesn't happen, I'm calling BS on these two guys. Again, I did this like last year too. I'm calling BS on them once again if some very specific thing that's irreversible doesn't happen. How many times do I have to call BS on these people? Sounds like that's the end of the Robin Bullock segment and the Roger Stone segment. These people are not connected to reality, and they believe themselves to be some kind of special prophets to God, have some special information for everybody else that no one has, that God passed down to them. It's bizarre stuff, but I will be damned if it's not entertaining as hell to watch.